1913, newly elected American President Woodrow Wilson boasted, I'm going to teach the South American republics to elect good men. Although Wilson was elected after promises to avoid foreign wars, he promptly ordered a military attack on Mexico. Wilson was unhappy with Mexican President Huerta, so he secretly ordered an armed seizure of Mexico's largest port. This fact surprises Americans, even those who read official history of this event. Accounts refer to it as an occupation, as though American troops were invited to visit. This was an invasion that killed nearly 200 Mexicans and two dozen Americans as the U.S. military invaded and occupied Mexico's port city of Veracruz from April 21st until November 23rd, 1914. It is unclear why Wilson ordered this attack. Mexico was in turmoil because of a bloody civil war. An American fleet was dispatched to the Gulf of Mexico in case American lives were threatened since many worked in Mexican oil fields. In early 1914, President Wilson secretly ordered an invasion. Thousands of U.S. Marines were embarked on Navy ships to join the fleet off Veracruz. The U.S. Army was ordered to ready a combat brigade in Texas for immediate deployment from the port of Galveston. Several weeks later, these forces were ready to invade, but an excuse was needed. Two justifications for this attack are offered by official history. On April 9, 1914, Mexican soldiers detained nine sailors from the USS Dolphin, who had landed unannounced by boat at Tampico, supposedly to buy gasoline. They entered a restricted military area and re were detained by guards. The local Mexican general released the sailors an hour later, but American Admiral Henry Mayo demanded a formal apology and the Mexican general complied. Admiral Mayo then demanded a 21-gun salute to the American flag. The general ignored that silly demand as he was busy fighting revolutionaries in the area. President Wilson called this refusal an insult and asked Congress for permission to attack Mexico. Congressional approval did not occur promptly. Meanwhile, an American diplomat at Veracruz reported that the German freighter Paranga was due for a routine stop at Veracruz. It was to deliver rifles and ammunition to the Mexican government, who President Wilson despised as he was backing the revolutionary forces of Inustiano Carranza. Wilson ordered waiting American troops to land to seize these weapons at the port. American Admiral Frank Fletcher was offshore at Veracruz with his invasion force waiting for an order to land the landing force. He received orders from the White House at 8 a.m. on April 21, 1914, and informed Mexican General Moss that his men would take control of the waterfront. He ordered Moss not to resist. Moss complied and withdrew his soldiers from Veracruz, but he armed local volunteer militiamen and cadets at the local Naval Academy to resist should the Americans attempt to seize the entire city. At 10.50 a.m., 500 American Marines and 300 sailors approached shore in boats. Meeting no resistance, the Americans landed at Pier 4 and moved towards their objectives. They secured the pier and customs house where the German ship was to dock, but then advanced on the post office and telegraph offices, the rail yard, the cable office, and the power plant until encountering sporadic gunfire. Admiral Fletcher then announced the entire city must be taken and landed more Marines. Over the next several days, sailors and Marines slowly advanced into Veracruz while encountering sporadic gunfire. Houses and buildings were searched as Navy ships offshore fired guns at several buildings in support of attacks. Mexican President Huerta sent no military forces to defend the city. Veracruz was finally secured on April 28th after the Americans suffered 22 dead and 70 wounded, while Mexican deaths were estimated at some 160 dead and 200 wounded. The U.S. Army's 5th Brigade arrived that same day and came ashore with 3,000 soldiers. They waited for an counterattack by Mexican forces who never came, which probably disappointed President Wilson. This would have provided him an excuse to continue fighting onward to Mexico City alongside Carranza's forces. But Carranza, 
who Wilson assumed would appreciate American military support, openly denounced this invasion. Mexico had already endured an American invasion from 1846 to 1848, and all Mexicans opposed another American intervention. Anti-American protests erupted throughout Mexico, forcing thousands of American workers and tourists to flee to the United States. Great Britain denounced the invasion along with all other Latin American nations. Wilson faced criticism at home since most of the American public did not support another invasion of Mexico. In March 1847, Veracruz itself was bombarded by American guns until it surrendered after hundreds died. Without support from Carranza, an unexpected blowback from this pointless invasion, the American force loitered in Veracruz for five months until Wilson decided to withdraw it. Official historians are challenged to justify Wilson's reckless and murderous invasion. They pretend this was a confusing, spontaneous event, but facts show the invasion was planned weeks in advance. For example, the invasion force included 500 Marines of the Advanced Base Regiment. They were not part of Navy ship Marine detachments, yet were embarked on transport ships off Veracruz before President Wilson ordered the invasion. Another 1,500 U.S. Marines from Panama landed the same day Admiral Fletcher ordered the attack. Organizing and embarking these Marines with supplies aboard ship took weeks, not to mention the transit time to arrive on April 21st. U.S. Army official history claims its newly formed 5th Brigade embarked aboard four ships in Texas with all its equipment and needed ammunition on April 23rd and set sail to Veracruz the next day. Anyone familiar with military deployments and logistics knows that staging and loading ships with a brigade and combat supplies takes weeks. The 5th Brigade must have been alerted and embarked days before because there is a photo of one U.S. Army ship offloading at Veracruz on April 22nd, the day after the Marines came ashore. A second example to doubt official history is a supposed mission to seize arms delivered by a German ship. These were American arms produced by Remington and shipped by an American financier, John Wesley Decay. He used a German freighter knowing the U.S. Navy would not dare seize a ship belonging to a great power, which also had warships in the area. As a result, the plan was to seize the arms after they were unloaded at the Veracruz Customs Warehouse. If this were true, why did the Americans land before the German ship arrived? It showed up hours later and Mexican officials were not there to pay for goods, only invading Americans. So the ship left and delivered the arms at another Mexican port. No U.S. Navy warship was ordered to trail her because Admiral Fletcher was busy invading Veracruz and had no interest in the German freighter and its cargo. Back home, President Wilson spun this imperial adventure into a great victory. The nation's most prestigious award for heroism is the Medal of Honor, and 55 were awarded for this minor invasion, more than any battle before or since. Admiral Fletcher got one, and most other senior officers. Most of the rest were given to commissioned officers, and many were awarded to sailors who never left their ship. Some citations only noted for extraordinary heroism in the line of his profession during the seizure of Veracruz, Mexico, 21 and 22 April, 1914. Marine Major Smedley Butler was awarded the Medal of Honor for his role. He told the press, I received one, but I returned it to the Navy Department with a statement that I had done nothing which entitled me to the supreme decoration. The only real success of the invading force was to rob the Mexican government. In those days, a big customs house was also a federal bank that collected tariffs and paid ship for cargo. Mexico had a large foreign debt that was paid out to ships when they delivered goods at Veracruz. It owed lots of money to New York bankers, too. When the Americans finally left, all the money from the Veracruz customs house was gone. Because of this theft and the killings and damage to Veracruz, Relations between Mexico and the United States remained unfriendly for decades. Music